as the president of the General Assembly said in 1966, if the UN had an ideology, it would be human rights. And I think Kofi Annan said something similar, that DNA, the DNA of the UN must be human rights. The U United Nations is uh, very much um, uh, the realization of the rights of the individual and also the community and the juxtaposition and interplay of the two. I think one of the interesting aspects about the MDGs that uh, of all the MENA countries, uh, only two fulfilled the MDGs, uh, Tunisia and Egypt. The first and the second country to undergo the Arab Spring um, uh, and the popular uprisings. And it's sort of telling, you know, that these countries were on track at the time in 2011 to fulfill their MDG requirements, but it was not enough. It was not enough. The dignity of the individual was not secured by this process. And it tells us that, you know, development, the right to development, which we all assert, it's not an a la carte menu where we pick and choose what we... No, these are obligations that all states uh, have and the individuals that they preside over uh, are entitled to. And uh, it's, so certainly the right to development must be something assured, uh, but it has to be done through a human rights sensitive lens where the dignity and worth of every, every individual is secured. But it also raises this other point about how do you present the difficult issue, you know, FGM, uh, how do you raise it with a highly sensitive culture, highly sensitive um, government? My own understanding of how these things could be done was in part my experience in the UN many years ago now. Um, and it wasn't a long experience in the field, but I had the, the privilege of uh, being Kofi's assistant for a while when he was in the former Yugoslavia. And uh, we were just about to see President Milosevic in Belgrade. And we bumped into an EU delegation, um, a European delegation traveling in the opposite direction. And they said to Kofi, please don't raise Kosovo. If you raise Kosovo, it's the end of the meeting and you'd be thrown out of uh, Milosevic's office before you could even get to all the other points you would want to raise. So I was uh, his note taker. Uh, we arrive in Milosevic's office. We sit down, there are only four of us. And uh, I put my briefcase down and I bring out my notepad, and I'm starting to take the first few notes, and the first thing Kofi says is, uh, I'd like to raise Kosovo. <laughs> and the way he asked the question was so direct, but not offensive. And, and he forced Milosevic to answer the question. And I, I sort of, from that point on, I thought there is a method to this. There is a method to sort of bringing forward the information, but not necessarily in a way that they would consider offensive. Different cultures have different sensitivities, so how you strategize in trying to bring this forward, I think is important. But the important thing is that they also respect you for doing it. If evidence falls into our lap, if it comes uh, into our uh, sort of uh, uh, aperture or field of vision, we will not ignore it. And I think that's ultimately what human rights up front is about. It's not that you should be going out searching and mining for this. That's not your job. But if, it comes, uh, if you come across it, then the Secretary General hopes that the entire system will be alive to, having, uh, to believing that it has the responsibility to report upwards. How you analyze the information, it is difficult. It is not easy. And human rights up front puts a premium. To a certain extent, you, the assumption is made on, on the violation of civil and political rights. But we must also look at all rights here. The right to education, the right to health. I mean, one of the most dramatic things is when you look at infant mortality uh, across the globe. We're still talking about six million infants dying every year from preventable causes. The local authorities of all these countries where the, this happens, you know, if, if they are preventable and through simple sort of means and strategies they can be addressed, then there's something 
much more serious than just a general accountability. So when, when an RC is viewing a country and there are clearly things that seem to be delinquent about the way the country is discharging its uh, responsibilities regarding all the rights, economic, social, the right to development, uh, the income disparities that we see, the inequalities, uh, education, uh, then you know these can be triggers for deeper discontent and ultimately the failure of the state if you take it to its logical conclusion. And, and how you analyze this, it is tough. Uh, it, perhaps a lot of its experience, and many of you, are, are, you know, have deep reservoirs of experience, and, uh, but it is tough. And we, I mean, everyone knows that you don't want to be crying wolf uh, if uh, you find that the situation is more chronic than, and less acute. Uh, but it requires a sort of judgment uh, to be made, and that's why I think that so much of the system relies on the RCs, the eyes and ears and the brains of the UN on site to distill this information for us. So I don't have a, a, a simple answer for you or a clear answer, but that we appreciate your work deeply. I, I cannot overstate that more.